So we shall see. We shall see what happens there. All right. HOA bullshit continued. Oh, Home Organization Association or something like that. This is when, like, people in a neighborhood want to pretend that they live in a gated community, but they don't. They just want to control who moves in and who doesn't. Once again, it's just one of those things that starts off, it's a great idea. Hey, we have a nice fucking neighborhood here, you know? All it takes is one fucking jerk off to come in, knock a house down, and then make build something that looks like a white castle. That happened to a buddy of mine. It literally, the guy built, you know, literally built a house that looked like a fucking white castle, thinking his house looked like a castle. It doesn't. It looks like I can go in there and order those delicious tiny little burgers. Oh, my God. I haven't eaten a white castle in forever. Um, anyway. HOA bullshit continue. But then what ends up happening is it's just this great way to uh, what's going to happen is, you know, you start the HOA is most people are going to sort of participate. And what's going to happen is these psycho control freaks, once again, will rise to the top and then they will just start unleashing the psycho within. And then this is the vehicle. All right. HOA bullshit continued. Dear Billy Buckets of frankincense and burr. I don't know what frankincense is. Um, I know it's been a few weeks since you've talked about the horrors of neighborhoods with an HOA, so I figured I would rekindle the fire a bit. I love it. Last June, I bought a house that is in a neighborhood with an HOA, uh, and while I knew beforehand that HOAs are usually a fucking scam, I really had no choice as most of the neighborhoods in my area have them. Uh, yeah, and plus, you know, houses are so fucking expensive now. It's almost like if you can afford one, you, people are just going to grab it, you know? All right. Oh, well. Well, the house I bought had these boulders on the corner of the driveway and the street, probably to prevent people from driving on the grass. Fast forward a few months, I get an email from the HOA president, Christina, whom I always refer to in email replies as Christine in hopes to piss her the fuck off. Oh, dude, that's fucking hilarious. Anyways, she emails me telling me I need to remove the rocks or I'll be fined $20 a day after the 10th day if I do not remove them. So I go onto Google Maps and I look at the street view from two years prior and I see the boulder sitting there, which means she just now decided to enforce this rule that causes no harm to fucking anyone. Like, what if you don't fucking, what jurisdiction do they have? Uh, no. I can't afford to do it. She goes, anyway, he goes, I removed the rocks and then emailed her back stating so. You should have put them in her yard. <laughs> no, you know what you do? Just save one of them. Save one of them. Right? Right? And then a few years later, like a psycho Irishman that never forgets, you throw it through her fucking bay window. No, don't do that. Don't do that. I removed the rocks and then emailed her back stating so and how they were in the two-year-old Street View pictures and also asked her how one gets elected HOA president because I was interested in the job. Not surprisingly, she replied with a short thank you for removing the rocks without acknowledging any part of the email. Yeah, that's right, dude. You fucking go after her. To top it off, the cunt raised HOA dues by $50 a year for 2021, which can only be stopped if there is an 80% support against the rate raise. It's honestly hilarious to me how much of a power trip Christine is on telling other middle-class homeowners what to do. Fuck HOAs. Have a good weekend and go fuck yourself. Oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. That is like, that would fucking eat me up inside. So what you, your only thing that you can do is just keep doing more of that Christine shit to her. That's the only thing that you can do. And then run. And then what you have to do is just be a fucking salt of the earth guy for everybody else in that neighborhood. Run for fucking president. And run on the platform. And if elected, I will not break your balls about fucking ticky tack horseshit in your fucking yard. I will not allow 
crazy people to move in this neighborhood, but I will not tell you how tall your fucking shed can or can't be. Who the fuck isn't going to go with that? That's what you do. All right. Flat Earther wanted to reach out. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, here we go. Here we go. Let's get into this. Come on. Convince me. Hey, Billy Beta Boy. (laughs) I'm a Beta Boy now. Oh, okay. And you're the alpha. Okay. I see you're constantly discussing the flat earth phenomenon. I'm not constantly discussing it. You are. I'm just making fun of it. Fat people think I'm constantly talking about them, or I have been lately. Um, Can I ask you a question? Do you think fat people are around, or do you think they're flat too? (laughs) Ah, sorry. It was too easy. Um, And I wanted to reach out. For the record, I am not a scientist or mathlete. Yeah, I could have, you know, you didn't need for the record. I could have fucking told you that. I have, however, read tons of literature and nonfiction books about the discussion. A nonfiction book was written about this, what, for the fucking 1200s? I am reaching out to see you, to see if you are actually interested in hearing from a genuine critical thinker on the topic. I have a PowerPoint that has been in the works for some time and would be doing a video about it. Uh, to start up. No, I'm not reading this. I'm not, I'm not going to fucking read your PowerPoint fucking discussion. What I want you to, t- I just want you fucking flat earthers to tell me what, why would they tell you it's round when it's flat? What is the advantage? I get, I get a lot of conspiracy. I get people when they say, I'm worried about the vaccine. What if this is what they're using for population control? I, I, that makes that paranoid thought 100% makes fucking sense considering what governments have done to forget about other people, their own fucking people. What, what, what this government has done to people who aren't fucking white. I, I 100% get that paranoia. Okay, because I see the fucking the reason that they're doing it and the advantage of of them doing that, taking out all of these fucking people so they can live. These people all fucking die. And then this global warming shit slows down. There's more room for them, more property and all that. I totally get that shit, but I just don't get like. If it was flat. Right? Why would you tell me it's fucking round? Because the reality is, I don't care. As long as gravity still works and I don't float away from the fucking planet, I don't give a shit. But this fucking crap here, where people are trying to say that there is a fucking ice wall, like somebody would have seen it and taken video of it. Why is there no video of the fucking ice wall? Why isn't there anything out there where there's people standing, looking over, going, look at this, if I take a step here, I'm going to fall all the way down off the earth, right? (laughs) Just show me that. I'm not reading a bunch of fucking books. But if you want to read books on this, this is to start off with, the moon is within the earth's atmosphere. Even if we went to the moon, it's still not in outer space. Oh, my God. Sir, could you get a pilot's license and then please tell me that you still believe this shit? Um, Flat Earth as a concept is not old. Is not old? Yeah, no. My whole life, everybody thought it was fucking round until the Internet came around. Uh, It is actually new. Oh, you're saying back in the day, Columbus. Okay, the book below basically discusses how it was an invention to discredit evolutionary critics. From the time of the Greeks onward, anyone was aware of the shape. Everyone was aware of the shape of the earth. And yes, the the meme that Columbus was the only one who thought the earth was round is entirely inaccurate. 
Uh, yeah, I would believe that. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that there was plenty of smart people that fucking figured that out. Mathematically. Oh, my God. Are you going to tell me now that the sun goes around the fucking earth? Um, okay. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you here, buddy. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of the origins of NASA being that America took in war criminals an organization we should be skeptical of at the very least. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. But, like, the thing about it is, is then every single fucking country, our allies, our enemies, every fucking leader, all of them, all the scientists, all got on the same page for this fucking lie. They can't get on the same page about anything. We can't even get on the same page about what to do or what not to do with this fucking virus. But you're telling me all of these world leaders who constantly fight each other, constantly make up shit, constantly steal from each other, constantly try to wipe each other out. So the one place where they all agree to lie about is that the world's round. That's what the fuck you're telling me. Um, like I said before, I am not, in, in, not intelligent in a standard sense. Well, neither am I, okay? But I'm smart enough to listen to, to other, I don't know, whatever. I have been told I'm more wise than smart. I'm not a Christian. I am college educated, currently serving in the California Army National Guard. Well, that's great. Have somebody take you up in a fucking plane. Uh, thanks and go fuck yourself with knowledge. Yeah, buddy, I'm, I'm not wasting my time with that. I am not wasting my fucking time with that until somebody can. One, okay, look, here's the deal. I will read that shit if you can tell me what the advantage of is telling a meathead like me that it is fucking round when it's actually flat. Actually, fuck all of that. There is video about everything. Everybody has a fucking camera with them right now. Send me video of somebody standing on the fucking ice wall. Okay, at the edge of the fucking all of these fucking people that have pilots licenses and have boats and all of this shit. Somehow they've never gone out and seen it and posted it on their fucking YouTube page. Like, hey, man, I don't want to freak people out, but like I was sailing around the world and got a little lost and I ran into a fucking wall right in the middle of the ocean. And then I climbed up on it. I mean, what the fuck? All right. Anyway. Not to mention, I flew around the world one time in a plane. So the pilots must have been in on it, right? Like, just do a subtle... <laughs> I, flew from La- I flew from L.A. to Australia, back to New Zealand, up to Singapore, Hong Kong, Mumbai, then Dubai then New York City, and then to L.A. Okay. I did that. And if you're going to sit there and tell me that this guy was doing all these twisties and turnies and all of that type of shit, that essentially, that every... you, I, I can't get into it. I mean, dude, there's a fucking reason why when they fly to Europe, they fly north first before they head over the fucking ocean. It's because it's round. And up top there, it's a shorter distance and they save money on fuel. <laughs> or, or is the map that I'm watching on the plane also lying to me? Which would mean... All of these fucking people know that it's really fucking flat. And for whatever reason, they're all lying to people like me. And for what? I actually think you're just doing this just to fuck with me, just to watch me get worked up. I will go along with a lot of fucking conspiracy theory, but I, I, I just can't with that one. I can't. I can't do it. All right. Censorship. Uh, dear Billy Bubble Boy, I work for a small magazine, and in the last few years, the amount of censorship I've seen is incredible. Yeah, I don't doubt that. And I'm an older lady, and I've been writing for lifestyle and arts for 40 years. Every day now, I see some form of silencing 
or ostracizing over opinions. Yeah, and I bet it's coming from the left. Benign ones, too. The, and yeah, from the left and from lo- corporate lawyers who are trying to preemptively anticipate how these lefties are going to get fucking, these se- severe lefties are going to get offended. Uh, the diversity of ideas is almost dead. Our pitch meetings used to have really independent ideas. I assumed there would be a reversal, but instead it's, it has become more vigilant. It's coming. It's coming. It's adjusted. It'll adjust back, and then they'll be in the middle again. Uh, I'm not speaking about controversial topics. For example, a piece on a newly discovered art form, uh, art from a particular part of the world, was pitched to the editors, but because the region of the world the art came from is associated with taboo opinions, it could inadvertently upset a reader. Yeah, this is because of people on the left. The extreme people on the left, this is what they did to critical thinking, free ideas, and all of that. And they think that they are liberal, and they're not. They are fucking, they're dictators. Um, it reminds me of a society, the society my father grew up in in Eastern Europe. All opinions published and taught in schools were subjected to a collective idea, always disguised as what's good for the people. Do you see a reversal in this? Would appreciate your insight. Yes, I do. And what it's going to take is people going out of your way to say exactly what the fuck you're thinking. Um, I've been trying to do that with my stand-up act just to just... just I really have to work on pushing out because there was like a three-year period where I kind of gave into that. Oh, I don't say that. Uh, maybe some of you, if I say that, am I going to get in trouble? And I, I started like, you know, alligator arming some shit. And then last summer I did the Chappelle um, uh, retreat there out in Ohio and there were no phones or anything. And I was like, holy fuck, this is the way it used to be. And I could say whatever I wanted. And I was, and I realized that because of these fucking lefty assholes, I had been censoring myself on stage, and I should not have done that. And um, so I think there needs to be an awakening because I think a lot of people are doing what, what you're, the place you, where you work at are actually doing it themselves. Um, a lot of advice I get from my reps is don't do that. It's not worth it. Don't st- you know, uh, don't say this, don't do a, a project about this, don't stick up for this comic that's getting shit on, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it. I've pretty much ignored that for the most part. Those ones when people are getting canceled, there's that thing where the, it's like you want to support, but then you also don't want to keep it going. And you're kind of hoping it's one of those three-day things and then nobody gives a fuck and they've moved on to something else. It's really a fucking shameful period. Um, um, much like the Red Scare. And, and just when, when this all is said and done and people look back on it, the amount of like really decent people who just didn't do anything wrong, who had their careers taken from them, um, you know, it's just fucking, I don't know. It's just human beings. We're awful. Um, okay, here we go. Why I don't care about being obese. All right. Dear Bill, I don't listen to your podcast a lot, mostly just YouTube clips and your specials on Netflix. Uh, While on YouTube the other day, I came across Bill Maher's opinion on fat shaming, which led to this rabbit hole of different celebrities sharing their opinion on obesity. Then I remembered you. Are you calling me a celebrity? Thank you. Uh, On your special, talking about how plus-size models wanted to be treated as beautiful or fatties, as you call them. I'm morbidly obese, and I agree. These people are not beautiful, and I doubt the vast majority of the general populace think that they are beautiful unless you have a BBW kink. I don't know what that is. Having said that, I, being a fatty, am impervious to fat shaming. I know I am ugly. Okay, we share that. I know I'm ugly, too, all right, and fat, and no one would want to touch me. The thing is, I don't care. Okay. 
Well, you care on some level because you're writing me. Uh, This is not to say that I allow being fat to overly interfere in other people's lives. I normally buy a business class seat because they are bigger and I won't make the person next to me feel squished. If I can't fit in the car with my friends, I'll hire a cab or an Uber, which takes me along with them to wherever we want to go. I know being fat is curable. The thing is, is I don't want to cure it. You just (laughs) that's fucking this guy's like the punk rock fat guy. Um, That was like this guy I know who's been just boozing his face off forever and he's never tried to quit uh, there's something i don't know there's something i envy about that um anyway and if someone tries to shame me rather than persuade me to cure it it just irritates me at one point i literally recreated the 100 dollar to fuck off me i don't know what that is let me explain why i don't care or why other fat people might not for me food is an addiction not only fast food like mcdonald's or burger king even gourmet food like Kerala lobster, I don't know what that is, or Shikora Kara. Uh, this addiction combined with the high stress environment of the education system here leads to a lot of stress eating. Um, eating helps me cope with the pressure associated with exams here. Eating also, yeah, but dude, you can, and cigar smoking help me keep, take the edge off the day and drinking, did all of that. You can pick, you can, Choose something different, dude. Don't kill yourself. You're going to kill yourself. Um, eating also is both a... You, you know what it is? I try. I kind of figured out why I abused alcohol, edibles, cigars, and shit like that. I figured out. I was like, I figured out because I wasn't happy with myself. And I had all of this pain from fucking years and years and years ago that I never dealt with. And when I would start to feel these feelings, rather than allowing myself to feel them, figure out what they were, talk to them about somebody, cry it out of you, whatever you had to do, I would just booze my face off and yell and get in arguments with complete strangers about a fucking Minnesota Twins versus Red Sox game 40 years earlier, or something fucking stupid like that. So, you know, I don't know. You're not asking for advice, so I won't give you any, but I, I hope that, you know, at some point, you know, you turn it around. All right. Eating also is both a literal and figurative escape for me. Eating can be figurative escape because it allows me to cope As said earlier, literally, I'm hoping I get a heart attack and no one finds me till it's too late. And I figure at this point, you're asking yourself, well, why don't you use a razor blade or a noose? To be completely honest, I'm a shit-eating coward. (laughs) I'm both scared of death and kind of welcome it. Dude, I swear to you, you have no idea how, how alike you are with me. Uh, I'm too scared to plug in the toaster and drop in the bath. Yet when my heart gives out, I'm not going to cry out for help. I'm just going to lay on the floor, close my eyes and be at peace. Wow, dude, uh, you're kind of scaring me here. Cause I don't want you to do any of this shit to you, but I'm also, it's freaking me out how much I relate to everything you just wrote until then. I'm going to study for my law exam and work a few odd jobs. And just because, just because I am scared, what? Till then, I'm going to study for my law exam and work a few odd jobs just because I'm scared. All this is not to say that your jokes are not good. They're fucking awesome. Honestly, I kind of don't understand why people would get offended at a joke unless it was really egregious. You and a few other people online are what's making my life slightly less bearable. Uh, Keep making the same jokes you always make and never give a fuck about what other people think. Best wishes. Yeah, dude, you got to you got to fucking figure out why you're doing that to yourself. You know? That fucking shit, dude, that you just wrote there, which I think a lot of people relate to, where, you know, I don't kill myself cuz I'm too afraid to do it, but like, you know, death does <laughs> seem like a fucking like ah, it's over. You know what I mean? I totally 100% um, relate to that, but uh, I don't know. Hey, man, you like to eat, right? 
Why don't you eat some mushrooms? Maybe you'll have the same fucking results that I did. Which is, I, I realized how much loneliness, sadness, and depression was in me for so long. And I actually figured out where it came from. And now I'm in therapy and I'm trying to figure that out. And because of that, since the end of February, I haven't done any damage to myself. Um, other than fucking, you know, some milkshakes or whatever, but fucking I've, I've tried to like figure out why it is I was doing to myself what I was doing. Um, which is, I think, you know, whatever it is, boozing, overeating, whatever the fuck it is, if you can figure out the why, then you can try to fix that. And then I think, shit, it's easier to kind of like level stuff out, I think. But you're also talking about somebody who's only for two months. Has, I'm new to this shit. So anyway, I hope you turn around if you want to turn it around. But um All right, that's it. Okay. You seem like a cool guy. All right. Girlfriend thinks I'm gay. Dear old Billy Bonkers, I have a situation that is kind of hilarious and kind of fucked up, so I thought this might be the perfect place for a little advice. Insert 30 seconds of silence while you fumble to get your theme song. Oh, you're right. Let me see here. Is this it right here? It's time for advice. Hey. Your host, Billy Burke. That's me. Somebody else. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see here. Oh, wait. Now, does it go into the next fucking thing here? No, it doesn't. All right, cool. All right. Um, my, girlfriend and I, my girlfriend and I have been together for about three and a half years, and I truly am in love with this girl. She checks all of the boxes and then some. And then some. Super smart, beautiful, funny, amazing family, and she loves me. I absolutely see a future with this girl. I'm 25. She's 23. So I know we're so I know we're young, but I've been told I'm very mature for my age, and she's getting there. Um, no, it's nothing wrong with getting married that young. Then you can have kids when you're young and fucking see most of their lives before you kick it. Um, unlike me, the fucking super old dad here. Now, for some context, before I jump into the situation, in middle school and high school, I had been bullied by some kids saying I was gay. I've always taken pride in how I dress, how I look, my hair, and I would definitely describe myself as metrosexual. I was also very tall and skinny growing up, and I had poor posture. Oh, that's it right there, dude. Tall, skinny, poor posture? Yeah, you're going to get fucked with... It's the fucking laws of the jungle, unfortunately. Anyway, so the little fucks had a lot of ammunition, and I honestly don't blame them for it, but I'm not gay. Uh, As you can imagine, it fucked with me and killed my confidence. Yeah, dude, you're talking about someone who grew up with orange hair. (laughs) So, yeah, I know what it's like to have a target on your back. Um, In college, I decided I was going to put on some muscle. Really difficult. I have the metabolism of a hummingbird. Well, you got a great sense of humor, though. So that that makes up for a lot of it. And do something about one part of me that I have always been self-conscious about. I gained 20 pounds and am now proudly 6'2", 170 pounds. I do well with the ladies. And I've had a few girlfriends over the years, uh, none as long as this one. I have no resentment for being bullied when I was younger. In fact, it served its purpose as motivation for me to better to be a better version of myself. Um, I think about bullying all the time. I think, wish I could go back and, and, and stop a lot of it that I saw. Um, I was that weird. I was like a, a, in the middle of the pack. I got bullied. I bullied people, you know, get it off of me and put it onto somebody else. I really wish I had, mat- you know, you wish you had the maturity now of back then. Some of the stuff I think about, I still think about some of the shit that I saw some kids go through. I was just like, fuck. Brutal. Um, In the first year of dating my girlfriend, I opened up to her about getting bullied. And she told and told her that's why the gym became so important to me. She was supportive and felt bad that I went through that when I was young. But she also wanted me to confirm with her that I wasn't gay. Her asking me frustrated me. Yeah, that's fucking weird. But it was easy, and I chalked it up to her not knowing me well enough yet. I was pretty adamant about my answer and thought she got the point. In our second year of dating, she somehow brings it up again and says, Are you sure you aren't gay? Like you aren't 
going to marry me, have a family, and then come out, right? Whoa. And this time around, the question pissed me off. We had this conversation earlier. I've been with you for two years. We fuck weekly, and it's great. I'm also getting insulted. No offense at all towards gay people, but my girlfriend is asking these questions based on certain stereotypes, and I don't think there are enough evidence, air quote, evidence for her to be suspicious. I probably overreacted a bit. No, you didn't. But it hit a nerve that my own girlfriend is bringing up feelings I had when I was bullied in middle school. Uh... Got to be the end of it, right? Well, we're three and a half years in, and tonight she pops the question yet again. Dude, break up with this chick. She words it similarly to how she worded it the second time, and I got pretty heated. I basically said, we've had this conversation now three times. I've told you each time that I'm not gay, nor have I ever questioned it. It pisses me off that after more than three years, you're still asking me this question. This is not normal. I don't think most women in relationship ask their man yearly if they're secretly gay and going to leave them, so I'm insulted. She, of course, then becomes the victim because I didn't react how she wanted me to. I said, I'm sorry, but this is not okay. The next time you ask me that question, I better have a dick in my mouth. (laughs) Am I wrong here? No, not at all. Is dressing well, being neat, and keeping myself well-groomed really that much of a red flag that my girlfriend should be questioning my sexuality? I don't even talk like the stereotypical gay dude. Um, Any suggestions for how I can get her to believe slash not ask me the question anymore? Can't wait to hear whatever you say. Go fuck yourself. Um, Yeah, I would break up with this chick. Or I know this is what I would find out what the fucking be like. Okay, did your dad marry your mom and then after you were born come out and say he was gay? Like, what is this fear or what the fuck is it that I'm doing that makes you keep asking me this question? Uh, That's what I would ask her. And if you don't like the answer, I would fucking hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Because that's really fucked up. Now, granted, I haven't heard her fucking version of shit. Um, <laughs> it's funny if she fucking wrote in. Um, yeah, I'd have to hear what her concerns are to ha- have any fucking idea. But if you're telling me the truth, which how the hell do I know? But if you're telling me the fucking truth, you're not gay and you just dress well and fucking whatever. And she's just asking you that. I mean, you might be, are you an effeminate straight guy? Because they have those too, you you know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I have no fucking idea. So I do think that it is fucked up that you have expressed. I'll tell you, you know what else I think is fucked up? That you've stayed with this person. You're saying she's checked off all the boxes. I, like, how many boxes is she checking off that once a year she can ask you legitimately if you're gay or not and you still want to be with her? There's a lot of questions I have here. Because I, I think, I mean, if, I mean, I, I would just, one time maybe? I think you can ask somebody that once and then, a year later, they do it again. It's like, all right, I'm leaving you before I get like a fucking complex here. Like, Jesus Christ, I'm fucking, you got me sitting here watching John Wayne movies now, trying to fucking be extra manly here. So you stop asking me that fucking question. I don't know. I have no idea, but um, I don't think she's convinced. And you're three and a half years in, you're 25, you got your whole life ahead of you. Um, I don't know this person, but I can tell you this. Reading your email and just hearing your side of it, this woman is not checking off a lot of boxes for me personally. Um, So I don't know. Is it like her fucking weird way of trying? She doesn't want to break up with you, so she just keeps doing this thing that annoys you? I don't know. I I don't. This is that's a weird one. Some fucking heavy emails this fucking week. Jesus Christ. I'd never kill myself, but I'm fucking welcoming death or whatever the hell that was. And then this shit and fucking some fucking little Stalin chick running an HOA. Jesus Christ. When, when the fuck did this podcast become so, so, so deep, man? 
Um, all right, that is the podcast, everybody. Um, so I'll I'll leave you with this because what that what, what that guy was talking about the guy eating too much, you know. Um, that really bothered me. I don't. I, I hate people being as much as a douche as I am. I don't like people being in pain. You know what I mean? And uh, someone who's been in a lot of pain for a lot of his life, and now figuring out that you know, you know, your natural reaction is to fucking go away from pain, distract yourself from pain, bury your pain, and all that. And it's just, it just, it's still gonna be there. Which is why the next night you're still going to want to drink just as much, if not more, or eat just as much, not as more. Uh, go fuck somebody you shouldn't fuck, whatever your fucking addiction is. Um, but it's kind of amazing when you stop just for a couple of months and really try to work on whatever that fucking thing is that's bothering you, how much progress you can make um, quickly especially if you're talking to somebody that understands what you're going through. So I wish that for all of you, because if you don't deal with that pain, not only are you going to hurt yourself, you're going to hurt the people around you that you love. All right. That's the only public service announcement I've ever made in this podcast. So with that, go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday. 